Let's take a quick look at my songbook. We'll begin by downloading it from the App Store. We'll search for my songbook. There it is. I've already purchased it, so we'll go ahead and download it. On initial launch, it will ask if you'd like to load some public domain songs, which are very helpful for demonstration purposes. So we'll do that. Here we see the default screen of my songbook. At the top is listed the sets that are currently defined, and below that are the songs. Since we loaded the public domain songs, we have a few to play with. The default screen has a few different display options where you can sort them by tags. And you see I have a tag for public domain and a tag for fun. And they can also be listed alphabetized by the title or you could switch over and do it by the artist. We'll stay with the default screen for now. There's also a search bar up at top that you can use to search for songs. At the bottom right here, there are three more options. One's to do an export, one's to edit your tags, and the last one is to where you would add another song or set if you wanted to create a new one. The settings we will not get into at this point, but they're very many options for customizing the behavior of the, my songbook and even um, some additional features. Let's go in and look at one of these songs. I'll pick House of the Rising Sun and now you see it comes up in view mode. In the view mode you see the lyrics and the chords up above the lyrics in this fashion. My songbook has songs broken down into these sections, like here's a chorus, a verse, and another verse. This button will go back to the main screen. This is an auto scroll button to allow you to automatic scroll it. And here's a button if you'd like to use the metronome. And in the settings you could have an audible as well. And here's where we go into edit. Here's where we would add a section. We can put a backing track with it, and this is the song settings. For now, we'll go back to the main screen. What we're going to do is choose a little simpler song and demonstrate the editing features. We'll start with Happy Birthday here. This version of Happy Birthday only has one verse. Clicking on this center icon down here is the edit icon, and clicking on it, we go into edit mode. From edit mode, you can add your lyrics in. So I'll add to you and me. And we go back to view mode and you can see that it shows up here. But let's add a chord on here with me. Go back into edit mode and select the place we would like the chord to be. Now here it's going to go on top of the M. And we can use this chord picker here which will be pre-populated with chords already in the song and common chords for the key that the song is in. Here we'll put a D7 in. From that chord picker, we could have also put in any chord we wanted by using these pickers. Back in the view mode now, we still see there's only one verse. Now, to add an additional section, we use this plus icon in the bottom toolbar. You could copy a, an, an existing section, or what we're going to do, we're going to add a new section. And these are kind of the labels that you could, are pre-populated for you if you want to use them. We will add a chorus. And then down here, we can tap down here and put in the chorus. And similarly, we can add chords in as desired. Now you may notice that as I'm editing, I don't have a soft keyboard coming up. That's because I'm running in a simulator. And on your iPad or iPhone, you will have a soft keyboard unless you have a Bluetooth keyboard set up. Going back to the view mode, now 
we see that here's our course down here, which we could add. And there's another way we talked about. We saw that you can do a copy. So we could copy the verse. And here we have the verse, the chorus, and a copy of the verse. So it's an easy way if you have uh, duplicated content to get it in there quickly. Going back to the view mode, now we'll explore a little bit the, sec the song settings, which are this gear icon in the bottom toolbar on the right. Down at the bottom here, you'll see your song sections. Here you can reorder them. So we have a verse and then another verse. And if we did that, you'll see that they get reordered back here in the view section. You can also go ahead and just delete them if they were not what you wanted in the first place. There's some other settings that we're not going to go into right now. You might explore those as you desire. The last item we're going to cover in this basic video is talk a little bit about the sets. So here's a public domain set. And if we click on that, we see the name up here and here are the songs that are included in the set. If we wanted to add more songs to the set, we could use this plus button up here in the top toolbar. If we click on the edit button, this allows us to edit the title. We could delete any song that's in here, or we could even change the order by dragging from these menus on the right. Once you have a set, you can start the set at any song by clicking on it. And now you see this similar view to what we saw before with the addition of these little indicators down here that show which song in the set that you're currently at. And it also shows the next song that will be coming. What this allows for is very easy. You can page through your songs. And if you've hooked up a page turner, like a Bluetooth um, foot pedal, then you can actually very easily manipulate the songs and, and go through them if you're playing in a set, like during a performance. Removing a song from the set does not actually delete the song from, the, from your songbook collection. It just deletes it from this set. I hope you enjoy using my songbook. The last thing I'd like to tell you is please reach out to me. In settings, there's a whole bunch of additional features that I've not gone into. You can check on the website. You can find more information about that. And you're always welcome to email me by using this feedback and email button and email developer. I try to respond as quickly as possible. Thank you.